One more time, forward together. This song has become somewhat of Moral Monday's mantra, and if you know it, sing along, and if not, you will catch on to it. It's very easy. Just like a tree planted by the water, we shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, oh, just like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Tell Governor McCrory, tell Speaker Tillis, oh, just like a tree planted by the water. We We're standing for our voting rights. Oh, just like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. You sing this time. like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Forward together. Forward together. It is so good to be here in Greensboro. And as Dr. Nelson Johnson said on this day when death occurred 35 years ago, but tonight we represent a resurrection. All right. This is the 40th moral march to the polls we've had since the closing of the gender short session. And more than 17 straight events in the last two weeks, Dr. Brown. Yes, sir. I want to suggest there are four reasons why if we ever needed to vote, yes, sir. we sure do need to vote now. Yes, the first one is we need to vote because we need to recover our deep, the deep mandates of our Constitution. 146 years ago, black and white progressive Lincoln Republicans like African American, the Reverend J.W. Hood and Samuel Ashley, a white pastor, Congregationalist, choosing a path up from slavery in word and deed. 146 years ago, they came together and led our state morally and constitutionally forward for voting rights, educational rights and equality. 146 years ago, black and white folk like this crowd were working together to go forward. They wrote a powerful constitution that every state elected leader still puts their hand on a Bible and swears to uphold. We need to lift those words from history and realize that they must still be alive today. We must vote because of the mandates of our constitution that says we hold these truths to be self-evident. All right. That all persons are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, the enjoyment of the fruit of your own labor, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, yeah. We need to vote because Article 1, Section 2 of our Constitution says 
All political power is vested in and derived from the people. And all government of right originates from the people and is founded upon their will only and is instituted solely for the good of the whole. We need to vote. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because our Constitution says in Section 9, Article 1, for redress of grievances and for amending and strengthening laws, elections shall be often held. And Section 10 says all elections shall be free. Say that. We need to vote because in Article 1, our Constitution, like no other Constitution in the country, says the people have a right to the privilege of education. And it is the duty of the state to guard and maintain this right. All right. We need to vote because Section 7, 6 says that every person born in these United States and every person who's been naturalized 18 years of age and possessing the qualifications shall be allowed to vote in an election. And we need to vote because Article 10 of our state constitution that McCrory swore to uphold and Tillis swore to uphold and Berger swore to uphold says this, be beneficent provisions for the poor, the unfortunate, the orphan is the first duty yeah. of a civilized and Christian state. Our constitution says that the first duty is not paying off your lobbyists. The first duty is not trying to figure out how many, much uh, tax cuts you can give to the wealthy. The first duty is not how many poor people and sick people you can deny opportunity. But the first duty of a civilized and Christian state is how it cares for the poor. So we need to vote because there are some politically uncivilized activities going on in North Carolina. Come on, tell us. But not only that, we need to vote because of the deep mandates and the highest moral and biblical values of faith. Mm -hmm. Our Constitution gives homage to the Almighty God. So there's no way you can walk away from faith and the values of faith and talk about being constitutional. Yeah. But we need to know that the Word of God in many traditions sets high standards for how we should live as people and conduct ourselves in public policy and political power. Psalm 72 is a prayer that says, Lord, give the leader your justice. Mm -hmm. and, and Lord, help the leader to judge your people in righteousness and to care for the afflicted ones yeah. and to come down hard on the tyrants yeah. that would hurt those that are poor and afflicted. Isaiah 10 says, Woe unto those Whoa. who legislate evil yes, and write oppressive laws that rob the poor of their rights. Yeah. We need to vote because the Bible says in Matthew 25 to governments, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick and in prison, did you come and visit me? All right. High standards. High, High standards for how we ought to operate in the public square. And the third reason we ought to vote, the third reason we ought to say if we ever need to vote, we need to vote now, is because Speaker Tom Tillis, Senate Leader Berger, and Governor McCory and their ultra-conservative extremist Tea Party art pope puppets have misused power. Now I want the media to understand this is not partisan here, I'm just reporting on what they've done. It, this is not about supporting a candidate. This is about what elected officials have already done. And I want to say to everybody on the side, if you agree with this kind of policy, you ought to vote for them. But if you don't agree, you ought to let your grievance be known. Let me talk about what they've already done. Somebody asked me the other day, a Marine Media say, saw, said, are you for Mr. Tillis or against him going to the Senate? I said, I haven't even thought about what the office he's running for. I'm looking at what he's already done with the office he has. Uh -huh. And what we've seen, based on our deepest constitutional matter, values, and our deepest biblical and scriptural matter, is a deep and profound misuse and abuse of power. Uh -huh. And we ought to vote. It's extreme and mighty low to push policies in one year that will resegregate our schools and eliminate preschools for many poor children and deny funding to public education and support for teachers. 
It's extreme to lie to teachers and say you gave them a raise as though you think the teachers can't read the budget. Yeah. It's extreme to take so much money from public education that we are now 48th in the country, next to last, lower than Mississippi. It's extreme to try to take $10 million from public education and give it to private schools when the Constitution you swore to uphold says you cannot use public money in private schools. Because of this abuse of power, we ought to vote. It's extreme and mighty low to cut Medicaid for 500,000 people in a state of 1.7 million poor people, knowing as one study estimates that 2,800 people will die because of a government policy, not because of God ordination. It's extreme that we will lose $2 billion this year and 2,500 jobs and 25,000 jobs over the next 10 years and that hospitals will suffer and some will close and that 23,000 veterans are being denied Medicaid expansion and construction workers and the majority of the people who would get Medicaid expansion are the working poor. Yeah. That's a misuse and an abuse of power, especially when Republican governors like John Kasich of Ohio have said openly that to deny Medicaid expansion is in, a, is in essence war on the poor. Yeah. It's extreme on every turn to say you're going to appeal Obamacare. Appeal? First of all, the name is the Affordable Care Act. But to appeal what you call Obama, the, it's extreme to say, if I get elected, I want to deny people with pre-existing conditions. The right, that's what you, would happen if you repeal the Affordable Care Act. I want to say that insurance companies don't have to cover maternity for women. That's what you would do if you repeal that's the Affordable right. Care Act. I want to say that college students who are 26 years old can't stay on their, on their mother's and father's health insurance plan. That's extreme. And we ought to vote like never before. It's extreme to cut 170,000 people's unemployment. To be the only state in the nation that rolled back long-term unemployment in the midst of the current economic crisis. That's not about black and white. That's about right and wrong. And we're talking about what they've already done with the power they have. It's extreme to say that raising the minimum wage is a, is a, is a dangerous idea. Hmm. To disallow a living wa wage is wrong and to suppress vote labor rights is, is, is right. It's extreme to raise taxes on 89% of North Carolina so that you could give 11% a tax cut. It's extreme to cut $5 billion out of our state budget that will disallow our ability to fund education and fund infrastructure and fund economic development. It's extreme to cut 900,000 people's work and earned income tax credit so that you can give 23 families a tax break. We are not here just to talk about what they will do with the offices they want. We need to first look at what they've done with the offices they already have. And just based on the misuse and abuse of power they've already expressed, if we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. You know in the budget they passed, they cut a million dollars from the home and community care block grant that helps homebound senior citizens. Mm. Mm. Y'all think about that a minute. You're, gonna, you, you, you're hurting poor people, you're hurting children, and you're even willing to hurt poor senior citizens. That is an abuse of power according to the Constitution because our Constitution says the first duty of a civilized state mm. yeah. is it's beneficent for the unfortunate, the poor, and, and orphan children. It's extreme to sing America, America, God's grace he shed on you and then you don't want to have grace on the LGBT community. You don't want to have grace for the immigrant community. You don't want to have grace for people who are poor. You don't want to honor the principle of equal protection under the law that has been in the North Carolina Constitution ever since 1868 and has been in the federal constitution ever since the 14th Amendment. So we in the Moral Monday movement say we've taken this tour to report to give an actual picture of the state of the state 
based on our deepest moral and constitutional values and, and to point out how McCory and Berger and Tillis and their allies in the General Assembly have used the power they already have. Yeah. Mm. And if you agree with it, as an American, as a North Carolinian, vote for it. Yeah. But if you don't agree with it, then you need to register your grievance yeah. at the voting booth. Yeah, that's right. And let me for a minute say something about this sexuality because they want to trip a bunch of folk up and, 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 and say, you know, if you vote for me, uh, I'll, I'll protect God. Well, first of all, we don't need you to protect God. And God doesn't need you to protect God. God can do that very well by God's self. And then we're going to protect the sanctity of marriage. Well, you, you can't protect somebody else's marriage. But if you want to talk about sexuality, we really need to have a conversation. I think about sexuality. We don't need to have a conversation about about, about homosexuality. Uh, we don't need to have a conversation about LGBT and stand up and try to hurt that that part of our community because however you feel about that, that's between people's priest, pastor, iman, God, and themselves. Uh -huh. You know? I mean, especially since you don't want to talk about whoremongering. I mean, why you want to have all this conversation about sexuality? You know, that, that's a pretty broad subject. <laughs> And I, and I don't think anybody really wants to have that as a public conversation. Uh -huh. But but if, but but I do think, Dr. Brown, we ought to talk about sexuality. Yes, I, I want, in fact, tonight I, I feel like talking about sexuality. Talk about Let, let's talk about sex. <laughs> Let, let's talk about where the political leaders and the extremist Tea Party have gone a whoring after the other gods of greed and injustice. All right, all right. Come on, all come right. on, come on. Yeah. You want to talk about sex? Bring it on. Let, let's have a public conversation about sex. You want to talk about sex? Let's talk about how Tea Party extremism, how you have committed an adulterous and illicit intercourse between big money political leaders and the Supreme Court. It, and you and you and you carry out this illicit intercourse in the back room and the back seats of your political machinery. And now what you have done in the back seats has produced the maliform offspring of injustice and inequality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on. If we ever needed to vote, we need to vote now because it's mighty low to commit crimes against democracy and to try to suppress a bridge and undermine the right to vote through gerrymandering, redistricting, creating apartheid voting districts and passing the worst voter suppression bill. And let me tell you, don't you, in North Carolina, don't you get your attention wrong. I know many of you are concerned about that Supreme Court. I am too, and I don't like what they did in Shelby. But in North Carolina, this whole mess about voter suppression started with House Bill. I said House Bill 589. And, and, and uh, I think I know who was the leader of the house. And no bill gets to the floor without coming through the speaker's office. So if you're concerned about voter suppression, you've got to talk to Mr. Tom Tillis and the members of the house. And because of all this, say all of this, if we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. But as I close, not only should we vote because of the mandates of our Constitution, not only should we vote because of the deep mandates and the high uh, moral values of our religious traditions, and not only should we vote because of the misuse and the abuse of power that we've seen over the last year or so right here in North Carolina, we must vote because we recognize the moment that we're in. All right. If we ever needed to vote, we sure need to vote now because for us, the right to vote is not just a constitutional matter, yeah. but a right born out of struggle, out of sacrifice. Yeah. And our right is a gift from the God of justice uh -huh. who said through his prophet 2,600 years ago to every nation, you must do justice and love mercy and walk humbly before your God. And 2,000 years ago had his son say that the least of these must be at the center of public policy. 
I want you to think for a moment in this historic city with this civil rights museum behind us where we are in the times in which we're in. And you will understand even clearly why if we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. Yeah, yeah. Let me do a remix. Here we are, 395 years since the first ship landed in Virginia to bring slaves. Here we are, 244 years since Christmas Addicts was the first African American to die fighting for this country. Here we are, 238 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Here we are, 227 years since the Constitution was adopted. Here we are, 227 years since we were fractionized in that Constitution and African Americans were called three-fifths of a person. Here we are 185 years since Mexico outlawed slavery and 178 years since Texas revolted because they wanted to keep their slaves. 165 years since Harriet Tubman escaped slavery. 162 years since Frederick Douglass uh, preached a sermon on July 4th where he said that America's July 4th was fraud, bombast, and hypocrisy until America did right by the sons and daughters of slaves. Here we are 151 years since the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Here we are 149 years since the end of the Civil War and 144 years since the ratification of the 15th Amendment that guaranteed the, the protections of the right to vote. Here we are 120 years since the riots of Wilmington, North Carolina tried to stop black and white political fusion power. Here we are 110 years since the riots in Springfield, Illinois. Here we are 94 years after white women won the right to vote in this country. Here we are 70 years since Smith versus Allwright opened up primaries to black people. Here we are 70 years since Primus King was denied the right to vote in a Georgia primary. Here we are 60 years since Brown versus Board of Education. Here we are 59 years since the brutal murder of Emmett Till and his mother made America look at an open casket. Here we are 54 years since the sit-ins in Greensboro organized by A&T and Bennett students. Here we are, 50 years since Fannie Lou Hamer that said there comes a time when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Here we are, 53 years since Dr. King said to the AFL-CIO that the only voting bloc that could transform America would be for blacks and labor and poor whites and Latino to learn how to work together. Here we are 51 years since the murder of Mega Evers. 51 years since the march on Washington. 51 years since the bombing of four girls in a Birmingham church. 50 years since the signing of the Civil Rights Act. 49 years since Bloody Sunday. 49 years since the Voting Rights Act. 49 years since Malcolm X was assassinated. 49 years since students at South Carolina State were massacred. 46 years since the assassination of Dr. King. 46 years since Henry Fry, who failed a literacy test, became the first black member of the North Carolina Legislative Caucus since Reconstruction. 46 years since the signing of the Fair Housing Act. 45 years since conservatives dismantled the Office of Economic Opportunity. 45 years since my parents voted to integrate public yeah. schools. 43 years since young people at 18 got the right to vote. And 35 years since the massacre by the Ku Klux Klan right here in the city of Greensboro. And here we are six years since Barack Obama, whose name Barack in Hebrew is a form of praise unto God, who's been called everything but a child of God. He's been called a thug. He's been called illegitimate. He's been called un-American. He's been called a socialist. He's been called a lie. He's been called a communist. But here we are six years after every time he walks into a joint session of Congress, they still got to call him Mr. President. Hey! Tell you, you better know where we are. We've been through too much. We've seen too much. We fought for too much. If we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. Ungodly, ungodly gross amounts of money are being spent to take us backwards. It's lewd, it's pornographic, it's, it's, it's blatant and it's arrogant. These are troubling times. And if we ever need to vote, we sure do need to vote now. 
I don't know what party is going to show up tomorrow, but I know that the moral movement needs to show up at the polls like never before. Because our parents did more with less than we have today. With less, they beat slavery. With less, they beat Jim Crow. With less, they beat lynching. With less, women beat back the chauvinism of our constitutional analysis that kept them from the right to vote. With less, they beat the KKK. With less, Harriet Tubman got 500 slaves out of slavery. She didn't have email. She didn't have text. She didn't have Facebook. She didn't even know what Twitter was. She didn't have a car. All she had was faith in God. A 38 pistol on her side. When she told folk, you either gonna be free or you're going to heaven, but you're not going back. She had moss on the north side of the tree and a north star in the middle of the night. And she had a made up mind. She did more with less. We must do more with more. So from now, until 7.30 Tuesday night. Email everybody you know. <laughs> Tell them to show up. Call everybody you know. Facebook everybody you know. Text everybody you know. MySpace everybody you know. Take some of those friends off your Facebook you don't need. Get you some real activist friends on your Facebook. Tell them to show up. Call everybody you know. Yeah. Knock on every door you know. If you know how to tweet, you better tweet, tweet, tweet your hand pops off. Get everybody you know. Because God is not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves. If we ever needed to vote, we sure do need to vote now. But what we know from history, Reverend, is that when we do what we're supposed to do, when we stand up for what's right, God will show up and God will bless our efforts. God always has and God always will. When we work our faith, miracles happen, movements happen. Faith is what you believe about God. Work is what you do because of what you believe about God. Faith without works is destitute and devoid. But faith with works is dynamic and can change your destiny. And whenever we have worked our faith, God has showed up. Yeah. When Moses stretched out his rod and worked his faith, the wind came down. God showed up. The Red Sea opened up. Uh -huh. Pharaoh was brought down. When they marched around Jericho, God showed up and the walls fell down. When David threw his rod, God showed up, took care of the velocity and the trajectory of the rock. And the next morning, the Greensboro record, I mean the Jerusalem News and Record, <laughs> Road red, the bigger they come, the harder they fall. Yeah. When Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro stood up, then God showed up. When Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king, God showed up. When a woman touched the hem of his garment, God showed up. When a boy gave him fish and bread, God showed up. When Jesus went to the cross, God showed up. And early Sunday morning, resurrection happened. When Thurgood Marshall went to the Supreme Court, God showed up, brought American segregation down. When Rosa Parks sat down, God stood up. Martin Luther King stood up. Jim Crow had to step down. If we vote, the Tea Party will be voted down. Because every time we put our faith and our works together, evil is shut down. Love and justice has never lost. It might be crucified. It might be bruised. But weeping may endure for a night. But if you hang in there, joy will come in the morning. Do I have a witness? Won't God show up? Won't God show up? Won't God show up? Won't God show up? If we ever needed to vote, yeah. we sure do need to vote now.